What's crackalacking? This is Darren Fatman McDuffie. And today, before we get into this video, I wanted to play a game with you. And that game is Can You Guess What I'm Talking About? So, can you guess what I'm talking about? This is the first clue. You're at work, you brought some leftovers, you have 15 minutes to eat, and your leftovers are cold, and you pop your leftovers into this apparatus. What is this apparatus called? Second hint, if you didn't get it the first time, is you're at home on a Friday, Saturday, Sunday night. You want to watch that movie you've been wanting to watch for a long time, but you want some popcorn before you watch that movie. So you take out a bag of that popcorn, put it into this apparatus, and within three to four minutes, you have a freshly bag of popped popcorn. Can you guess what I'm talking about? If you haven't guessed by now, I'll tell you that I'm talking about the microwave. And today I wanted to tell you specifically why you may want to think about kicking your microwave to the curb. Now for me myself, I haven't used a microwave in about 10 years and my thinking was guided by a book that I read a long time ago by Kevin Trudeau called Natural Cures They Don't Want You to Know About. And in that book he describes um, the many hazards of using a microwave and I'll get into that a little bit more with you uh, in a minute. But before I get into the specifics of using um, the microwave, I wanted to give you a little bit of history on how the microwave was invented. The microwave was actually invented by Nazi Germany and they wanted a technology where they could heat food up quickly and on a large scale for their soldiers. So they actually in, uh, ended up coming up with a technology called a radio misser and that migrated on into what we use um, called the microwave. So when they invaded Russia, the Russians got a hold of this technology and also the allies of Russia got a hold of the technology. Now the weird thing is that the Russians banned the use of microwaves in the Soviet Union for maybe one or two years after they discovered, discovered the technology. And then that technology kind of trickled down to the United States and specifically to a defense contractor by the name of Raytheon. So Raytheon got a hold of technology and then a self-taught engineer comes on the scene. His name is Percy Spencer. He's walking around, he's walking around and he grabs his technology and he says, okay, well, you know, I invented the microwave when he actually didn't invent the microwave, you know, someone else did, but he took the technology, they patented the technology, and then in 1946, they, they uh, came out with something called the radar range. Now, you know, many of us weren't born in 1946. Um, most of us were born probably in the 70s or 60s, and from my recollection, I recall the microwave kind of popping up on the scene in the late 80s. But the technology was already there in, um, in 1946, so, so go figure. Now, getting into the specifics of the microwave, so let's just think, of, think about this for a little bit, um, for a minute here. Microwaves work on uh, radiation. You know, they have this radiation that's uh, you know, it's bombarding the food, and the food is made up of energy, and the particles are moving and traveling around real, real fast, and that's how the heat is generated, and the microwave cooks food from the inside out. Now, you know, anytime you're dealing with radiation, you have to get in the mindset of, of thinking about cancer, because, you know, with, with, with radiation, we know we have Fukushima, we had all of these, these different things, Chernobyl, and people going through you know, radiation and having these extreme forms of cancer. One thing of note also is that cell phones also work on radio frequencies or radiation, and those are have been linked to brain tumors as well. So we're getting to this mindset of thinking about you know cancer and having the, the radiation, but let's also get in the mindset of nutrients and the nutrients in food. Food is supposed to be a, a nutrient dense thing and all food is made up of energy. So if you're bombarding the food with this radiated uh, energy, uh, it's going to change the chemical composition of the food. So we're doing this on a daily basis. Imagine you popping something into the microwave oven, you're heating your food up, you're eating it, and you're doing this day in and day out. And what you're really doing is you're really putting a gun up to your head and you're paying Russian roulette. And Russian roulette, we put a bullet up through our head, we pull the trigger until the bullet goes pow, it, you know, it shoots somebody in the head. 
that is the same thing that I always tell people. It's an accumulation of what we do over time that makes our body sick. So we're putting using microwave ovens all the time. We're using the microwave. We're you know encountering the toxins within our food. Over time, we're going to develop diseases. You know, if you use too much sugar and eat sugar all the time, over time you're going to develop diabetes. If you're using a microwave and eating other toxins over time, you're going to develop cancer. It's just a it's just a matter of time. Now, let's talk about studies. A lot of times I like to show and prove. A lot of people I don't like for anyone to tell me anything without backing it up. So one of the studies that comes to mind is the studies by uh, I think it was some Swedish uh, researchers and their names were Hertel and Blanc and they took people that were uh, using microwave food and they tested their blood. Now here's what came back when they tested the blood of these people who were eating microwave food. Number one, the white blood cells were decreasing and for those of you that don't know, white blood cells are the things that help us fight off infections. Number two was that good cholesterol or HD, uh, HDL decrease in individuals. So those, those are two factors um, within themselves. Now let's spin that a little bit and also talk about two things that doctors recommend. Doctors recommend that, you know, if you are a mother of a newborn baby, they recommend not heating food up in, I mean, I'm sorry, not heating um, milk up for your baby in a microwave. Also, when people have blood transfusions, the, the blood has to be heated or warm before they transfuse it into the person's body. So in both of these cases, doctors are telling you not to use microwaves in the blood transfusions. They don't use microwaves to, to heat up the blood. And that's specifically because microwaves have the propensity to change the chemical composition of whatever that they're heating up. So. You know, you got to get in the mindset of thinking about that. Again, you're doing this every day and you are changing the nutrients of your food. We are already a society that is lacking nutrients. Our food now does not have enough nutrients in it because of the way that we are farming the soil and other things that, that are going on with the toxins and the um, hormones that we're putting into our food. So we're already a nutrition, nutrition, nutrition deficient society and then you pop your food into the microwave which is changing the composition of the uh, food and also robbing the nutrients of the food and you're eating this on a daily basis so you make the conclusion of what you think would happen to you um, when you continuously keep using microwaves I know that they're convenient and I know that we all have jobs and we all have things that we have to do and it saves us a lot of time but what I tell people is that you can conveniently make yourself healthy or you can conveniently make yourself sick. The choice is yours. And uh, with microwaves as well, every study that I've read and every study that I've, I've, um, I've seen uh, points to the fact that repeated heating over uh, a food in the microwave uh, turns the food into something that's carcinogenic. And carcin carcinogens are things that are cancer causing. Now. You're probably out there, you're saying, okay, well, I can't use a microwave. I only have 15 minutes to eat. I don't know what to do. You know, this is convenient for me, and I, I just don't know what to do. So I was in that same situation a couple of years ago, you know, working in an office. I'm like, well, what can I do? I don't want to use a microwave. I want to, you know, be able to heat my food up, and I want to, you know, be able to enjoy my, my food warm and not eat it, eat it cold when I bring leftovers for work. So one of the things I thought about is like, how can I do this? And I'm going to show you a solution to doing this. One thing I did is I went to my department store, you know, Walmart, and I found one of these small crock pots. And I was in a cubicle at the time, so I plugged my um, uh, crock pot into my cubicle. And what I would do is, you know, I would eat at 12, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, and I would just place my food in the crock pot about, you know, two hours before so at 10 I would just put my food in there and just let it heat up naturally and by the time I was ready to eat my food was already warm now if you're at home then you have another option you can just use a good old pot you know we forgot about these things you know everybody's putting their food in a microwave now you we forgot about good old pots good stainless steel pots and you just put your food in there a little bit before if you you are 
uh, wanting to heat up some leftovers and put it in there or you co you can use the oven or you can use one of these uh, portable ovens so there's options out there for you if you don't want to endanger your health uh, using the microwave so I hope that you learned something from this video this has been Darren Fat Man McDuffie you can visit me at truthfromthetrainer.com and also visit my women's health blog, health blog at myworkoutroutinesforwomen.com Deuces, and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks.